Well, too big to jail, too big to fail. The Attorney General of the United States has come out and said, we were talking earlier about how Eric Holder's making news. I mean, this is the hit parade. He, 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 he said, uh, you know, we're not going to kill anybody with a drone inside the United States unless they're engaged in combat. Well, what the heck does combat mean? We've killed a lot of people without having declarations of war. The last declaration, formal declaration of war that we had was in 1941. Last time. That got resolved with the uh, was it the Potsdam Treaty? What was the treaty that finally ended World War II? I, I know the Treaty of Versailles ended World War I, but there were two of them. There were two different, you know, there was the end of the war in Europe, and then there was, which I'm not even sure there was a treaty associated with that. There was, you know, there was certainly, you know, what came out of that was a variety of things, Bretton Woods and others. But, uh, but then there was actually a signing ceremony on, on an aircraft carrier with the Emperor of Japan after the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But I'm not sure how it's referred to. In any case, that was the end of that declaration of war. And we have not had any declarations of war since then. So why are we using drones to kill people again in Pakistan? And why could that legal reasoning that we're using to kill American citizens in the Middle East or in North Africa. Why could that logic not be applied to the United States? So you got that. And then you got Eric Holder basically saying, you know, we can't, at some point, these banks are too big for us to prosecute. It becomes too difficult for us to prosecute. Now, what he's, what he's talking about, I believe, he did not elaborate on exactly why, but I think that really what he's saying is, that the Justice Department only has so many lawyers. And when you've got a bank that's throwing off 10, 20, 30 billion dollars in profits, they can easily hire enough lawyers to tie the Justice Department up in knots. This is what Thomas Jefferson referred to back, you know, at the founding of this country when he talked about wealth that that was so great it posed a danger to democracy, that it posed a danger to the state, actually, was his phrase. And he felt that the power of taxation ought to be used to reduce that wealth to the point where it no longer represented a danger to the state. At that time, I mean, he was thinking of wealthy individuals. Because the word corporation isn't even in the Constitution. I mean, you just didn't have modern corporations at that time. The modern corporate form really took, you know, came into being after, after the Civil War. With the railroads and the steel companies, and I mean, to a large extent, it was created by John Rockefeller and Andrew Carnegie. But basically, they, they have so many lawyers and so much money that they can keep the Justice Department at arm's length for so long that the Justice Department, this was... The, the Justice Department ends up saying, nah, okay, we're not going to take you to trial. It would cost us a fortune. It would take years. We'll just settle with you. Give us a couple billion dollars. We, I, we know that you, that you committed crimes, that people lost their homes, that people committed suicide, that people got divorced, that people probably committed homicides as a consequence of the stress associated with this. Families went down in flames. Kids died. People, you know, we uh, we know all that, but just and 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 you made a hundred billion dollars on it, but give us twenty billion bucks and we'll call it even. And that's what the Justice Department has been doing since the banks first started to fail in two thousand eight. In fact, it arguably has been doing forever, not forever, since nineteen eighty six. The last serious effort by the Justice Department to prosecute banksters was when the SNLs fell apart in 1986 as a result of Reagan having deregulated them four years earlier. And the Reagan administration's Justice Department actually prosecuted SNL banksters. But back at that time, I mean, the SNLs were not that large. Neil Bush, George W. Bush's brother, made a million bucks in the Silverado savings and loan deal, or so the lore goes. And never got prosecuted. Of course, he was, the, you know, son of the vice president. <laughs> yes, we're going to prosecute the son of the vice president. That's going to look really good. I mean, I think it should have been done. But the Republicans didn't. The administration didn't. 
So Neil got away with it. Now he's running an education program. Yeah, let's skim off some of that ed education money. Cool. So Eric Holder basically admitting that the banks are too big to be prosecuted. They're too big to jail. Which is what Elizabeth Warren has been saying all along. The system is rigged. These guys own this system. And that leaves us with what as choices? I think we have a couple. And I think we should be pursuing both of them. With regard to these big banks. And I would, by the way, not limit this to banks, or at least not limit the second part of this to banks. I think it needs to be done in every single industry in America. But to banks. The first thing we need to do is say, you have to pick which kind of bank you're going to be. Are you going to be a gambling bank or are you going to be a checkbook bank? An investment bank or a commercial bank? Which, which, which are you going to be? In other words, reinstate Glass-Steagall, because By 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 Byron Dorgan was absolutely right in 1999 when he said that 10 years from now, excuse me, it didn't even take 10 years. It took eight years. But he said 10 years from now, we're going to be looking back at this moment and saying we shouldn't have done this. Yep. When Graham Leach Bliley was passed and Glass Steagall was blown up. So you have to, you in, with regard to the banks, make a choice. Are you an investment bank or a passbook savings bank? Number one. And number two, let's start using the Sherman Antitrust Act. These big banks, and to, to break up these big banks, these big banks are big, not because they have done wonderful service or great things over the years, or they just, you know, so they're big because they bought up all their competitors. Every single one of these giant banks are giant banks because of the result of mergers and acquisitions. They all got that way because of Mitt Romney's industry. The, what used to be called the LBO industry, the M&A industry, mergers and acquisitions, leverage buyouts, pirate capital, pirate equity, private equity, you name it, you, whatever you want to call it, Mitt Romney's industry made these banks and these banksters too big to jail. Too big to fail, too big to jail. And it's not just the banksters. When giant food companies poison people and people die, nobody from the giant food companies goes to jail. When giant oil companies blow up people and, and, and people, people, you know, hundreds, thousands of cases of cancer come about as a result of it and entire ecosystems are wiped out, nobody goes to jail. Well, I understand, you know, BP now is trying to toss a couple of low-level flunkies to the, to the wolves, as it were. Maybe, maybe one or two people will go to jail out of that. Right. And Tony, what's his name? Is it Tony, Tony Hayward? Howard? Hayward. Hayward, yeah. Yeah. Tony Hayward, the, the, the head of BP, he's like, you know, he's sitting in his mansion someplace. He's probably sitting on the beach in the south of France right now. Come on. Let's, let us do what Presidents Roosevelt and Taft, two Republicans, did at the beginning of the 19th century and start breaking up these big industries, whether it's in the agricultural sector, whether it's in the media sector, whether it's in the banking sector, whether it's in the telecom sector, whether it's in the publishing sector, whether it's in the, the, the uh, retail sector, whether it's in manufacturing whether it's in defense, I mean, you name it. Pick an industry. Fast food, pick an industry. They are all dominated by fewer than six companies. That's wrong. This is the Tom Hartman Program. And it's not just wrong because of some kind of moral code. It's wrong because it's bad for the country and it's bad for capitalism. <laughs> 